Father sits on the throne Unto the Lamb Be honor, glory, and power Praise evermore Forever and your tests and everything goes right below that, right? Okay? But you can't put write down anything unless you what? Write your name. Yeah, write your name, but unless you know it, right? You can't answer the questions unless you know it. Think through it and start over. And that's God's forgiveness. God erases our the, the bad things in our life that we tell them about, and we're good. God's special right. love isn't that They're long. erasers. What else okay. we got? Sometimes we make bigger mistakes and we need erasers. But this eraser is going to remind you of what? Of God, of Living Springs. So when you're at school, remember that you are God's child first. And that's first and foremost. And so take your erasers with you so that you can understand that. Did anybody bring their backpacks today? We're going to do less in the backpacks. The opportunity to learn to grow. We send Katie out into the world of school. We ask you to bless him, fill him with love and peace and joy, and may the experiences that flow from the teacher's mouth teach him to learn and to grow. In, in Jesus' name. And all people said, Amen. And, and, and thank you for her gentleness, her kindness, her patience, and, and all that this about her. Send her forth into a new year. In the name of Jesus, we pray.
she's she's meeting them, and she's the second thing is she's traveling by camel, and the camel goes about 20 miles a day. How wise is she? Very wise. Huh? She has faith. That, 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 that is the truth. So it took her 70 days to travel this far. The Queen of Sheba went to see Solomon only on his reputation, and she spent 70 days with 797 camels, horses, and donkeys. That's how large the caravan was. Incredible. How wise. And yet, what does she come? She comes on his reputation alone to offer gifts. And if you look at your scripture, it says what? She gave him precious stones. She gave him gold. She gave him lumber. She gave him everything. The history tells us that she gave him four tons of gold. The Queen of Sheba came to Solomon with an offering of four tons of gold, besides everything else. I love how this section starts. It says, when the Queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon, she came to Jerusalem to test him with hard questions. How many of you guys still have those today? Huh? Don't, don't raise your hand. We'll talk about it later when we do our support group. Okay. But with hard questions, doesn't it make you wonder what she was all about and what those hard questions were? But yet it's, it's incredible. What drove her there? Why did, was she willing to make such sacrifices? Because she knew that there was a treasure that she wanted more than any other thing in her life. She understood that there was a treasure that she desired, that he had, that she wanted to be a part of. And it wasn't precious stones, and it wasn't gold, and it wasn't all these horses and camels, and it wasn't everything. It was what? She wanted wisdom. She wanted wisdom. To the point that she was willing to go and make all the sacrifices necessary so that she could be wise. Because in the history of Yemen, where she's from, there's written the questions, two questions that she has. What kingdom stands without wisdom? What riches are preserved without wisdom? Think through that. What kingdom stands without wisdom? And what riches are preserved without wisdom? You win the lotto. How many people win the lotto on five years later or what? Absolutely broke. They don't have any what? Don't have any wisdom. Sure. They don't know how, how to handle it. How many leaders have we seen through the centuries in the annals of history that had all the power but had no wisdom? And what happens? Lost them. Everything topples, doesn't it? Incredibly topples. But how about us? How many of you pray for wisdom? How many of you honestly seek it over everything else in your life? I don't see any hands going up. Because it's just not, yeah, it's just not so true, is it? We have so many others' agenda that we don't seek wisdom first. And I mean first. Not somewhere clouded a nine and ten or on the second list of our top 20. Yep. Amen. But what's so incredible is Solomon's wisdom and fame is contingent upon wisdom. 
And so Solomon's prayer, when he knew he was going to be king, he asked God for what? Wisdom. And God said, I will bless you with wisdom because you did not ask for riches of gold and silver and other things. I will bless you with wisdom. And Solomon's reign was for 39 years. It was the most awesome reign in, in Israel's history because God blessed him with wisdom and then Solomon knew how to use that wisdom to make Israel strong. If we look at script, if we look at scripture, I love the story of the two mothers who brought the child to Solomon and, and asked Solomon about whose child it was. Because one mother claimed it was her child and it wasn't. And the other mother claimed it was her child and it was. And Solomon said what? He said, cut the child in half. You can have half of the child and you can have the other half of the child. And so the real mother said what? No, you, you, you let my child live. You give it to this one. And Solomon said, you're the mother. You're willing to make the sacrifice. That's wisdom. And if we look at scripture, it tells us in so many ways. In the history of Solomon, Solomon studied, studied spiders and ants and locusts. He studied them as God's creatures to see how it, everything worked in the midst of God's creation. And so he could design his kingdom working out of those small insects. How many of you have done that? Wise enough to study that? What do we do with ants if they're in your kitchen? Kill them. Most of my ants are dead anyway. Oh, those are ants. Okay, sorry. Uh, but Solomon was so wise that he could understand it. Solomon set up a process of sending a thousand men to Lebanon each month to cut the cedars of Lebanon for the temple. And the cedars of Lebanon were the only trees 120 feet high that could qualify. He set up a system so that a thousand men would go, cut down, and then come back, and another thousand would go and come back, and he set it up. Solomon set up the drapes in the temple made of crimson and gold. And the color crimson was extremely difficult to get. Solomon's wisdom was all around them, but it was not just Solomon's wisdom. It was God's wisdom coming through Solomon, which is incredible. And they said if you gave Solomon a riddle, he would define the riddle and give you the answer. I wonder what hard questions she asked. I wonder why it was so important to dialogue with a man like this. How many of you would have loved to dialogue with him? I would have. I would have loved to hear the wisdom that he had that outpoured. And see, the Queen of Sheba knew in order for her to receive this wisdom, she had to sit at his feet. She had to listen to him. She could see him as her mentor. How wise was she? Extremely. Because she is ruling a country. And for us, it's hard to believe that God would put a black lady into a position like this. But this black lady Somebody. becomes a blessing for all of those around her. Because it wasn't about her and it wasn't about anything else as gold and silver. Because she was willing to give all that away to Solomon so that she could get what? Wisdom. How about us? Don't we need the same? Shouldn't we be praying for wisdom? If you got a teenager today, we should be what? Praying for wisdom, okay? If you have one going into kindergarten, you should be praying for wisdom. If you're going to get married, you should be praying for lots of wisdom, okay? 
If you're going to be teaching in the school system, you should be praying for double wisdom. It is for us that we need to be directed in the right way. If we're going to run a company, we have to be praying for wisdom to do that in the right way. If we're being asked to be healed, we have to pray for wisdom. So that the healing becomes God. It's interesting because when the scribes and the Pharisees were were doing their best to make Jesus look bad. Jesus said this, the queen of the south, the queen of Sheba, will rise in judgment with this generation and condemn it. For she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And indeed, what greater than Solomon is here. And Jesus was speaking of who? Himself. Jesus was saying, if you really want wisdom in your life, you need to embrace me as Lord and Savior. If you really want to understand what life is all about and how God created it to be, then you have to take within yourself the wisdom. What can I say?